Hey everybody, it's Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And of course, your host, Dr. Carmen Bryant. Thank you guys so much for all the comments, for everything that you guys are writing and emailing me. I really appreciate it, even with the topics. And so today I wanted to go and recap and go back and speak on a topic that many people are having a hard time with. Not everybody. So some of you guys that have been with me for a long period of time, when I did the video, Narcissist and Sex, you got what I was saying. But there are some people people that came on and just totally blew out of proportion what I was saying on the video. And some of the things that were being said is, is that I said, which is not true, which I said is you give them more sex and they'll stay with you. So it's up to the woman to give more sex to the man to make the man stay. Well, what kind of ignorant statement would I make? Know that you're dealing with a narcissist. That is not what I said. What I was saying was I was talking about abnormal relationship versus normal relationship. I said, this does not apply to those that are in narcissistic relationship. What I was saying was, and sometimes uh, what I teach um, uh, couples and even what my mentor teaches is that in a, what we consider a normal relationship with not a dysfunction such as narcissistic personality disorder, you have to divorce proof that marriage. And some of the ways that you divorce proof that marriage, for example, is when, for example, like us women, when we go into a relationship, the man is used to seeing you dressed up. This is how they're used to seeing you. And then once you get into that relationship or get married, all of a sudden you become comfortable and you walk around with a moo moo and a plug on top of your head. And you know, as you get older and you have kids, you don't take care of yourself anymore. You barely bathe. You don't, you don't dress up or look nice just because you're getting older and things are not sitting up under your chin anymore. It does not mean that you still don't keep that fire lit in your marriage. You still work on and still look nice because there are people on the outside that don't mind challenging you in your relationship. Likewise with men. You know, she met you, you smelled good, you looked good, you dressed nice, you kept your, your hair cut, you kept your face shaved, you might be losing hair, so you come up with another hairstyle, you get comfortable in the relationship, you don't even take a bath like you used to take a bath anymore. You know, you don't say nice things to her anymore. So, you know, you, you're putting a gap in that relationship, meaning that, you know, some of us work in environments where there are younger men, there are men that, that can compete with the men that we have married, or women that can compete with the women you have married. And so, if there's a gap somewhere, meaning that, for example, to punish each other without giving each other sex. What I'm not saying is, is that a woman doesn't have the right to say no, because there is a such thing as marital uh, rape. You know, it's not not saying that there you have the, not the right to say no, or I'm tired or whatever. Uh, but what I am saying is, is that when you two come together, there are needs that both individuals have. You know, a lot of times women need conversation. They need to feel safe. They need to feel, you know, loved and, you know, and this is where that narcissist usually plays the role in, in filling in those little gaps. If you're in a relationship, a non-narcissistic relationship, and you decide that, hey, I'm not going to compliment her anymore. I'm not going to make her feel good. And it's not anyone's responsibility to make you feel a certain way. You have to have some type of self-esteem or something about yourself and stop depending on other people to make you feel a certain way. So there is a sense of you have to be whole yourself without having to depend on your spouse or your loved one that you're your partner to always have to make you feel good about yourself. What man wants to be with a woman that every day she's needy, meaning that you constantly have to tell me, and if you don't tell me you love me during the day, there's a difference in communication styles. You know, there's a difference in communication styles between females and between males, and especially in relationships. However, you know, one thing that you have to remember is that we're not getting any younger. We're maturing like fine wine. We're not turning into vinegar. We're just maturing like fine wine. And you know, now when you go into, you don't think of it as competition, but you still want to keep him interested in you just like you still want her to be interested in you so you still want to keep that fire going in that relationship you still want to date you still want to look nice you know look nice for yourself and and you know he's going to work and he has a pretty Betty, you know, with her breasts all up under her chin and everything is tight and in place. She hasn't had any kids and she's flirting with him. And what if she's a narcissist? She's looking for the gaps and the holes, you know, that that and I'm not saying like I said they still have to work on themselves because a person that doesn't want to be kept or to stay in a relationship, it doesn't matter how much sex you give them. It doesn't matter what you do. They're just not going to stay, but we still play a role in the relationships, meaning that even women and men play a role in the relationship. If a woman feels uncovered, if she feels insecure, when I say insecure, meaning like you're, you're not providing those needs of, you know, making her feel protected, making her feel loved. You know, there's a gap, there's a hole there. And so when you, when 
she goes out into society, there are people that are willing to see, because sometimes when we talk, we tell on ourselves, what do you think the narcissist is looking for? They're looking for those holes, those gaps that they can fill in. So they have this false perception that this individual is exactly what I'm looking for because I'm not getting this at home anymore. That's why marriage counseling is very important for those that do not have narcissistic personality disorder. And then likewise for a man, you know, she, you, she, she's a housewife. Let's say she, she is a manager of the home and the family, but you come home, she stinks all the time. She never looks nice. She never fixes herself up. Not true enough. Yes. You got the kids to take care of. You got, you know, who got time to do this, but there's still a sense of you make them, men are attracted by what they see and women are attracted by what they hear. And so there's a role that each individual plays and there's an equal, well, there is no such thing as 50, 50. But there is a role that each person plays in making that relationship work. Now, this is the normal, what we would consider a normal relationship without uh, personality disorders, without narcissistic personality disorders. So that is what I was saying. I was not saying to give a narcissist more sex to make them stay. That's stupid. That's absurd. That is not what I was saying. Now, let's think about the narcissist and sex in general. Now, keep in mind, each individual narcissist is still individual. They're still different, yet the same. The personality disorder is the same and the symptomology is the same, but that does not mean that they don't have other things that are going on. For example, uh, if you go back and watch my video concerning narcissistic, um, when they have like paraphilic um, disorders, meaning like uh, pedophilia, voyeur voyeurism, you know, sex with objects, sex with bestiality, sex with, with animals, you know, they have other disorders that go along with that. Some of them are addicted to pornography. Some of them are addicted to having sex with prostitutes, you know, and so here you have this individual, you have the covert, you have the, um, the co not the covert, you have the uh, cerebral, the thinkers that are more the intellect, and then you have the somatic, which are more the show-offs, the ones that use sex a lot, you know, have to look good, have to get as many men or women in, in their in their little harem, you know, and, and sex is a very important thing to pull in, but they don't look at sex as the same way as we look at sex. They look at sex, you know, we look at sex as this is the closest bonding that you'll ever get with another human being. This is the closest that you'll get with another human being, and I also use the term soul ties. If you go look at what the term soul ties mean, you know, positive or negative soul ties, they want those negative soul ties because they're trying to hold you hostage and so they don't mind using the sex especially if they're skilled at what they're doing and that sex will just totally blow your mind some of you guys said you had mind-blowing experience and the sex with that narcissist was off the chain and some of you were just straight out like the sex was total garbage i don't know how women are running or how men are running behind this individual it is complete garbage because a lot of times it's in your own head you create that those feeling and, and it's wonderful in the beginning beginning and then after a while being with the narcissist you realize like okay everything is so mechanical you know everything is very much the same they come home they take a shower they wait till they get um you know until it gets dark they turn the lights off you know they do oral sex they expect you to do oral sex they have sex they go to sleep and then after a while you're like let's try new stuff and everything they don't want to try anything new they want to stay on this regimen because now you realize everything that they did before was to just hook you in to keep to keep you there and you are so dissatisfied and a lot of times what people would do is they'll dismiss that well he or she has other good qualities and it's not all about this so now you're justifying you know now you're justifying because in a relationship you should be able to talk about the do's and don'ts or the likes and the dislikes in 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 the sexual you know that's the closest you're ever going to get with a human being why not talk about you know what you like and what you don't like let's experiment this is what i don't like this is what i do like i like when you do this you know that's you come into counseling and and, and it won't happen with the narcissist because for you to tell that narcissist that the 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 sex is guard it doesn't even matter how you say it to him that is, or her is a slap in their face and then they'll throw in your face some some of them do some of them don't you know that when i was with other people it didn't bother them some of them may be inexperienced and to them it might be that blood mind-blowing experience that we talk about but to you oh freaky deek you know you may be more experienced and so to you it's like this is just absolute garbage and some of you knew it was garbage when you first did it now the other thing that I said was, is that also we all have our own specific belief systems concerning uh, premarital sex or sex before marriage. We also have our own, um, you know, spiritual thoughts or principles that we follow concerning adultery, concerning um, um, sex before marriage, you know, and what sex means within a marriage. You know, there that you still don't force sex on anyone, you know, regardless of what your belief is, you don't force sex on someone, you don't take sex. That's, that's rape, that people still have 
have a choice at what they want to do. Now, in the biblical perspective, those of us that are within the, you know, the, the and everyone is not biblical, you know, the belief system and, and many of us have fallen short. I'm one, you know, but the, the sex before marriage, you know, is something that after a while you, you realize, you know, how relevant it is. That does not, though, um, just because you're a Christian, just because you're in a spiritual belief system does not protect you from being um, a predator, a prey to a narcissist because you have narcissists that are within the religious arena that look and sound very powerful. They have adapted those ways and talk and they have these, you know, uh, uh, they're saved and, and they, they preach the gospel. They're in the pulpits, you know, they're, you know, whether they're Buddhist practitioners and they have certain belief system, but they don't follow that belief system, you know, or at the same time, they may follow follow the rules that go along with it because it is a way of portraying themselves amongst other people. But behind closed doors is totally different. Excuse me. You know, and there is, you know, we, we have been given certain... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? You know, biblical principles to follow as husband and wife within marriages and what sex is in marriages and, and what does that mean? And, and one of the things is that your body is not your own, which those that are not in the Bible, you know, that do not believe in biblical principles, you know, are abhurred, are, are absurd. That is horrible, you know, and it's not the fact that your body is not yours. That's that's it is your body. You still have choices. But at the same time, it's two people coming together and respecting and honoring each other, you know, understanding that what I do affects you and what you do affects me. It's an honorable thing. So that that is a biblical principle. And those of you that are not, you know, uh, believers in, in the Bible or anything, you have your own spiritual belief system concerning, you know, sex. Some of you do believe, you know, I, I want to save myself for that experience. And some of you, I want to test drive it. I don't want to get into something and it's complete garbage. But all of us have ended up in, in the hands of most of us have ended up in the hands of a narcissist because a lot of times we have made uneducated um, decisions um, and a lot of you beating yourself up because of that. Some of you guys were drawn in. This is the best sexual experience I've ever had and I'll work around this. But if you're working around the sex, everything else is going to, because if, if your relationship is just based on sex and that's it, there is nothing else within that relationship. It's not going to last because a narcissist gets bored very easily. And so you have the cerebral narcissists that are that, that need thought fuel, that need an intellect into an, an, an intelligence and they'll use the sex for the purpose of hooking you or of pulling you in and they know how to do what they do but they're not really super interested in sex like that and so they won't really give it to you the way that you desire to have it once they've introduced it to you a somatic narcissist doesn't mind having sex with anybody now they may have sex with you and it blows your mind or whatever and for some of you guys straight garbage it doesn't do anything for me how in the world does he or she you know have sex with all these people what do they get out of it and i don't get anything because they they haven't even mastered, you know, the marriage. They haven't even mastered the, the relationship. They're still an amateur in the bedroom. So how in the world do they go out and have sex with all these people? There's no, and they're going to smear the names because they're going to make them look bad. So they can't say anything about them sexually. They know how to play the game. They know what they can and cannot do. And when they, when they hit a wall or when things that, you know, uh, they know that they're not as experienced as, as, you know, they get with a person is, is more experienced than they are. And, and, and they're looking at them like, ew, you know. Or they don't want to, and then they have to talk about them to a point where if they do say anything about the sexual experience, you know, it'd be null and void. You know, no one's going to believe it anyway. And so but you have to remember that a narcissist, and they grow bored very easily. And so once they grow bored with you and they've got you, or they think they've locked you in, they just go to their, their other, their new supplies. And you can always tell, for those of you that have been in a relationship with a narcissist, that they're, you know, they're very mechanical. And, and once they get comfortable with you, it's just things that they do all the time, all the time. It's so boring. There's nothing exciting about it whatsoever then all of a sudden they introduce you to something new nine times out of ten the very new thing that they introduce you to is something that someone else introduced them to that they have to use in order to hook that new supply and so all of a sudden sometimes they forget that it's not you that they were doing it with because they're doing it with you and you're looking like where did that come from and they realize okay you're on to me so i need to stop doing what i'm doing or they may they may bring back to you something you taught them because they're using it with someone else and then they forget who they were using that that particular skill with in the first place but nine times out of ten even with the new supply they'll just go back into their old routine with it once they get um, accustomed to it and so they're very mechanical a lot of them are very mechanical and the way that they get you back most people fall for the sex because it was so great and I want that feeling that you have to be able to put your feelings aside and think logically think think you know it no matter how good the sex was 
And some people are just hooked on the sex. No matter how good the sex is, you have to remember your whole relationship is not catered around the sexual experience. Because if that's all that your relationship is, there is nothing to your relationship, period. You know, they, they won't work. They won't do this. They, you know, they're disrespectful to you. They don't even like you. You don't even like them. You just don't want them to go because you don't want anybody else to have sex with them. That's crazy. That's absurd. And so I just wanted to clarify that video because there are some people now, those of you that have been with me for a long time, you know, it was one of my, my older videos where I was just kind of learning how to bring the topics up so I was kind of like mellow and, and wasn't excited like I was before because I was just getting to know you guys uh, so I wanted to go back and recap on that because some of the people that were coming on there were taking what I was saying out of proportion and why I was not saying what I was being accused of saying I did not say that you give them more sex and they're going to stay that's stupid you can give somebody as much sex if you want to give them they want to leave they're going to leave that's their choice so that is not what I was saying and so just go back you listen to that video it was kind of boring I went back and listened to it. it's kind of boring but I wanted to go back and recap on it and go back and make another video just to recap on the old video to clarify what I was saying because I was getting a lot of comments on that video and a lot of people that are already hurt or brand new to the channel that don't know me that don't know my character you know doggone well i'm not gonna tell you guys to give that narcissist more sex to make him stay let him go let her go what what is it let them let the door hit them and where the good lord split them let them go you know it doesn't matter who cares about the sex you want you care about your mind and your emotions you know and your family and your children you know one day you'll meet the right person and then your emotion because a lot of good sex has to do with the emotions behind it because if you don't have any emotions behind it, good sex is just good sex, you know. But if, if emotions are behind it, you truly love this person, this person truly loves and cares for you, it'll be great sex. And it gets better with time. So I just wanted to go and clarify that video and talk about the sex. Remember, sex, sex is not the same as the way you look at sex. Sex is the closest that two individuals in the animal kingdom, they mate. So they get in, they, they go into heat and they mate for the purpose of procreating. Animals just don't lay around having sex for pleasure. Humans have sex for pleasure and for procreation, but they have sex for pleasure because this is a bonding experience between you two human beings this is goes to another level of intimacy a soul tie whether positive or negative you know a different type of soul tie positive or negative you know and so it's a different level a, a narcissist knows that understands that now they may not be able to articulate but they understand that and they know that they can hook you if they do it the best way they possibly can and exert that much energy to hook you and so after a while though they get comfortable and they just go back to their own selves you know they drop the mask and they go back to their own self and you realize that you have been tricked and that you know it's really it wasn't even worth your time you know the sex wasn't even worth your time some of you guys still had pleasurable sex even until the day that you left and you think about that because that is how they pull you back in so hopefully this has helped you guys thank you so much for tuning in please subscribe to my channel it is dr carmen bryant overcoming narcissist abuse hit the bell hit all so you know whenever i go live on sundays and whenever I post new videos, I am on Facebook. I have two Facebook pages. One is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. And that is my professional Facebook page, which I post videos on. But whenever I do speaking engagement outside of the um, outside of the realm of or the outside of the clinical um, speaking that I do, you know, when I speak beyond the clinical and I speak on a ministerial level, when I'm ministering, I post those videos on Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Where's my book? You can go look Overcoming Narcissist Abuse you'll see my picture on there click on that because anytime i do other speaking engagements that may be centered around ministering or church you'll see that there you know uh, on that side uh my mentor also hit the, the the thumbs up button so you follow and share the videos and go to my mentor's uh youtube channel it is helen sadler destiny helper she brings you the same information from a biblical and um biblical and spiritual perspective and she is the presiding prelay of into his chambers global ministries you can find her on periscope and you can find her on facebook and you're welcome to join her because she does come on during the weekdays and she does minister she does um ministry in the evening and then on thursdays she does bible study and sunday's church so you get to see her minister on on the platform that she ministers and on youtube you'll see her on the platform of narcissist abuse and she comes and talks to you as a pastor as a pastor you know, and talks to you about a, pa a pastor that understands narcissist abuse and gives you biblical information about it, spiritual information. And even if you're not a Christian, which she acknowledges that everybody is not a Christian, she also, just like I do, you know, you have to use the principles out of it in order to heal yourself. Um, those of you that need counseling, some people need counseling, not coaching. Look at the link below on my YouTube. 
and it is betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. They'll give you a 10% discount if you use the sponsored link. And also, if you're having financial difficulties, let them know they do have grants and they, they um, do have nominal fees to get you into counseling. I've heard a lot of good things. A lot of people have given me a lot of good reviews. You know, those of you that have used it, you know, give some people the reviews on, on how you liked it. It's, uh, you, it's in the privacy of your home, your office, telephone, Skype online um, but these are very skilled uh, therapists that assist you in your process look for those that are um, trauma focused you know trauma tr uh, therapists that are trained in trauma post-traumatic stress complex post-traumatic stress you know parental alienation these kind of things um, and ask them questions do you know what narcissist abuse is some of them do a lot of them do and some of them don't you know but Get you some help. Get you some counseling. Don't be afraid to get counseling. It's the great, you are your greatest investment, especially when you've had someone so destructive in your life to tear your life up and then you have to go back and start all over again. It is the greatest investment that you can ever have to go in and see a counselor and invest in yourself. And so thank you guys ever so much. I do have a cash app and I do have a PayPal. For those of you that have asked about donations, I am more than honored uh, that you would ask, you know, and you are welcome to give. Thank you guys so much once again and you guys go and have a great day and be great.